Now we are going to take that answer and apply the Stokes relations. So due to the reversibility of uh, rays in time, R equals negative R prime, and TT prime is 1 minus R squared. Write that a little bigger. R equals minus R prime, and TT prime is 1 minus R squared. You say, what? How could that possibly be true? Well, the first one we know is true, but we don't know. But when we did Stokes relations, uh, or the, uh, the Fresnel equations, we found often that R wouldn't equal negative R prime or minus R prime, at least uh, around normal incidence. But then this looks like I pulled it out of nowhere. Well, the whole issue is how, how long are MOOCs, right? So this class only has eight weeks of content. So we had to cut a few things, so I cut Stokes relations. If you really want 14-week MOOCs the whole semester to see everything, you need to write your, your congressman and tell them, I, I want all MOOCs to be 14 weeks. But right now, the pressure is to make them not quite so long. So I had to leave this out. If you go to your optics book and look up Stokes relations, it will make sense to you based on everything we've talked about. It's basically the idea if you have light go in and uh, some reflects and some transmits, the exact same thing would happen if you sent the light backwards. If you sent a reflected ray in and a transmitted ray in, they would have to come together and make the incident ray. Basically, it doesn't matter which way you let time go. The electromagnetic waves will do the same thing forwards or backwards. That extra bit of information leads to other extra bits. You use that information to put some constraints <coughs> on R, R prime, T, and T prime. And that's, that's what you get. Very exciting. Let's now apply it, though, to what we're doing. Um, we're going to use that to basically what we're trying to do is instead of having four variables, R, R prime, T, and T prime, we're reducing it and getting it down to just the ones without the primes. So we have E R, as I've been writing it, is E naught E to the J omega t, right? And it's r plus, and then it's t t prime, but we're going to make that 1 minus r squared. And we're going to use the second one there. And then it was times r prime, but we're going to replace r prime with negative r. So we'll just write an r here instead of an r prime, and there's the negative sign. We'll stick it right there. All right? And then it's e to the minus j delta. That's the same. And then it's times. And then this factor was 1 over and uh, 1 minus r prime squared. And it was r prime squared, but we're going to replace that with r squared. And since it's squared, the negative gets squared. So it does not affect the negative sign here. So 1 minus r squared e to the minus j delta. Okay, so Stokes got us to, down to having everything just in terms of little r. No r primes, no t's, no t primes. Here's everything in terms of that first reflection coefficient. Now we have to simplify it, which basically means expanding this whole mess out. So e r is e naught e to the j. You're thinking, surely he doesn't mean he's going to foil that. And yes, we are. Um, this term is by itself, so we just have to multiply it by 1 minus r squared e to the minus j delta over 1 minus r squared e to the minus j delta. We've got to get a common denominator, right? So let's get our common denominator down here, 1 minus r squared e to the minus j delta. So this is um, r times that, r minus r to the third e to the minus j uh, delta. So that's just r times that bottom part, so we have a common denominator. r minus r to the third e to the minus j delta. And then up here, we have to distribute that r on that and multiply it by all that. So that's uh, minus r times e to the minus j delta, minus r e to the minus j delta. And then we have minus minus is plus r cubed 
e to the minus j delta. All right, we have all those. All right, let's see. What's left? Is anything left? Well, okay, the r cubed term goes away. That's fortunate, because that one is minus r cubed e to the minus j delta, and that's plus r cubed e to the minus j delta. So we're left with an r there. So we can rewrite this a little bit more as e not e to the j omega t times, and you almost think it's going to cancel further, right? You pull out an r and it's 1 minus, oh, not r squared. It's 1 minus e to the minus j delta. So r, 1 minus e to the minus j delta over 1 minus r squared e to the minus j delta. Okay, that got it pretty simple, but I believe I promised you I was going to make it intuitive. Well, sometimes I lie to keep you going, but well, okay, we'll, we'll, we'll see if we can get a little bit intuitive. <laughs>